to call us up higher, I wanted to uh, bring to our attention something that I'd seen uh, this last week in the circumstance of Jesus raising people from the dead on two different occasions. Um, this phrase kind of leapt out at me uh, this last week. It's talking about uh, Lazarus being raised from the dead. It says, And he that was dead came forth, bound hand and foot with grave clothes, and his face was bound with, about with a napkin. And Jesus said unto them, those around, Loose him and let him go. Now, I was intrigued by this event, the turn of events here, how Jesus actually employed those who were about Lazarus' brethren to participate in ministering to him to help relieve him of the things lingering about from his death and his burial. Now, I was reminded, about, and this is an appropriate reminder for this morning, about how when we are given new life, that new life is not granted with an immediate ability to exercise the full capacity of that life or with a, a, an understanding of all the implications of that life. And so there's a ministry there that's given to the people of God to open this up. Even, even after being brought into this freedom, there's a sense in which there's a certain bounding that remains, not because the, any slavery remains, not according to a deficiency of power of resource, but according to a lack of knowledge. As sin has had such a defiling effect on the mind of men that um, even when we're set free from its shackles, it requires that we learn how to operate according to this freedom that we've been given. Yeah. Uh, we, we, we see this examples of this in the world about pe people who've been slaves for so long that when they're finally made free, it's like they have to be, they have to be taught exactly what all that freedom entails, that you really are free, that the, 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 the bounds to which you can exercise that freedom. And really, you can really only walk according to this life to the degree that you are aware of the freedom that it has afforded you. And on the second occasion, in the fifth chapter of Mark, whenever um, he, the, the young damsel that he brought to life, the, the, I, I was uh, intrigued by this charge that they gave, he gave to them. As soon as she, as soon as she was uh, alive, commanded that she should be given something to eat. And in the, the eighth chapter of Luke, it's the parallel account. He says, and he commanded to give her meat. These examples are like what Jesus has done to the church, having provided himself as a means of regeneration. He's also provided ministers to those who are now renewed and alive to open up to them what has occurred in their resurrection and to aid them in using their renewed capacities. Uh, this is the ministry of believers for their fellows to help relieve them of their grave clothes, so to speak, and to glare unto them the implications of new life. Uh, this is the responsibility of those who've been given a grasp of these things and the ability to communicate them. It's the same charge that, that Jesus gave to Peter. He said, feed my sheep. Point out where the divine marketplace is, so to speak. Tell us, tell, tell, declare to the believers that you've been set in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. All things that pertain unto life and godliness are available to you in Christ. Proclaim to them that, that now having been raised from the dead, you are to live. And every, everything you have to be able to, to abound in that life is given to you. Our brother Paul uh, was the, like the initiator of this ministry, so to speak. And even today, as we talk uh, to one another about these things, the words that were given unto us by that apostle are, are some of the primary means by which we do that. Um, I, he, he reasons with the, bre the brethren according to this in the sixth chapter of Romans. And this, again, is a very appropriate for this morning. Uh, uh, we, we've witnessed new life being initiated here. Now, if we be dead with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him, knowing that Christ being raised from the dead dieth no more. Death has no more dominion over him. So you have to be able to reason of this. If there's no more dominion of death in, 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 in Christ, if you've been raised with Christ, if you've died with Christ, then there's no more dominion of death over you either. So you can actually likewise reckon yourself to be dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto God in Jesus Christ. So you, if you've been made alive with the same life that Jesus is alive with, then there really is no excuse to not be lively. If, if you are now presently walking in the light, walking according to the life of, of, of life, if you are among those who are alive from the dead, it's because the power and ability to do so is at hand. It's something that you, that you have, have, have uh, um, tapped into according to divine 
resource. So if, if you have no strength to walk and live, it's, it's because you've not been eating the food that's provided for you. If, if, if you don't have any direction or, or power and ability, it's because you've like put your nap, napkin back on, right? So I, I, in, in calling you and exhorting you this morning, I'm, 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 I want to exhort you to leave the napkin off. Use the eyes that you've been given to see. Don't bond, rebind yourself with those same gray clothes that you had on before. Use the, this renewed capacity that you've given. I commend unto you the truth that all things have been given unto you that are needful for you to live and abound in this capacity that you've been given in Christ. Dear Heavenly Father, as we continue in our meeting today, we pray, Lord, that you would help us to be able to abound in the life that you've granted us in Christ Jesus. We're thankful, Lord, for the, um, this turn of events that we've witnessed this morning for these uh, two young sisters. And we pray, Lord, that today, even now, they would begin to, to see the, the degree to which they have been enlivened. This in your son's name we pray. Amen. Amen.